Welcome back. So today we are here uh, to study F1. So today I'll be following on F1 as to what we are going to be doing in this chapter. So here we are. I'm going to be using accountancy notes. I've gone through various different notes, but I've figured that accountancy is creative. It's amazing in a way. It's very creative and it's nice. And I feel like we should uh, follow this to study about our topics for the syllabus F1. Now, uh, as you know, we are using F3, uh, LSBF F3 lecture notes for our lectures, but I'm going to be using F1 accountancy notes. So here we have it, syllabus one. So this video will be based on the purpose and types of business organizations. Uh, all right, let's go to the first topic, defining what an organization is. Now, organization or organizations in plural are defined as social arrangements for a controlled performance of collective goals. Now, there are three main things that you need to know in this sentence social arrangements controlled performance and collective goals now what do these things really mean and before i move on there are also the fact that their companies can be either profit making organizations or non for profit organizations non for profit might include the ngos you're working for or if you want to talk in pacific you have uh, the one that comes in my mind is uh, the Shokut Khanum Hospital from Imran Khan. That's really one of the, uh, it's a cancer hospital that's a non-for-profit organization. Most of the hospitals are non-for-profit. Most of the schools are non-for-profit. But certain companies such as Apple, Microsoft and stuff like that, they are not really uh, non-for-profit. They're making profit. That's the reason they exist. They're doing services, but they're making profits as well, right? Uh, moving, but these three things, social arrangement, control performance and collective goals are actually for both the types of organizations profit or non-profit making organizations all right so these three can be for both so these arrangements are social arrangements like I told you so what are social arrangements social is the word which defines itself as something that you do with a number of people you do collectively with few people now social arrangement is the fact that the company or organization that you are going you're making or you're running or you're working for means the fact that there are people around you how do you know you're working in an organization look around yourself you'll see people that's a social arrangement social arrangement is the fact that there are people there to work you will see people around you collective goals now there could be people in a cafeteria there could be people in Starbucks so does that mean they're working together no they're not so what is collective goals they're working for the same goal to make their bosses profits higher to make the company be successful make more money reduce cost stuff like that we'll be studying this in F2 about what type of goals the company can have these are collective goals on a social arrangement and number three control of performance now you do what sort of work you do nobody cares about it but no, in an organization where you're working for a collective goal in a social arrangement, you have to make sure the work you do, the performance is good enough. The other day I went to Starbucks and I ordered a coffee. Now the problem, when I got the coffee, I, I took first sip and I realized that I just am drinking hot water. I, I wasn't sure what that was, so when I opened it, it looked very funny. The thing looked funny, the coffee looked funny to me, and I went to the... Mm, person who served me that coffee and I said look dude it doesn't look right to me something is wrong about this coffee he looked into it he apologized and there was another man who made a new coffee for me and that tasted good that is control of performance so if you're not performing well there are people to replace you there's a control even if you or, or, or let's say I went to any shop there let's say it was on Starbucks or let's say it was Starbucks and I went there dude it's not the coffee is not very nice it doesn't taste good and let's say the person said to me, so what? Drink it. You suck. He would have said that. I mean, I couldn't do anything, could I? He would have, or, or, or worse, he would have just taken the cup of coffee and thrown it in my face. What could I do? I couldn't do anything. But it's a social arrangement with a collective goal to make money. And there is a control of performance. I think I've spent too much time on here. But moving on, I told you guys what a big business organization is. 
It's anything like a commercial, industrial, or anything that has to do with making money. Colleges, for example, non, uh, there are private colleges. They're, they're just there to take your money. I mean, there are good colleges, but they're still taking your money. But on the other hand, there are two. Uh, there is a non-for-profit organization, something that just exists to help you, like the police. That was actually, that was the main context of having a police in the first place. You don't pay the police to help you. They just help you whenever they need to. But I, the thing has changed. It has evolved in bribery and stuff like that. But that doesn't, that's not the point. There are various different scenarios. That's non-for-profit organization. And there are two types of non-for-profit organization. There's a public sector and there's a private sector. Public sector is something from the government of your country. Now, when I say police, police is not a private sector, but it's still there. So what is it? It's public. What's private? The security you get when you're living in a society. Now, there are societies. They are non-for-profit organizations as well. There are certain places on earth where people isolate themselves from other societies, other people. They live separately. They have their own security guards. They have their own shops. They have their own stuff, everything. That's a society. Society is a private sector organization and a non-for-profit organization. Make sense? Uh, I hope I've explained this perfectly. Moving on. All right. Now, features of a business organization. Now, there are certain, there are common features of business organization. I'm going to just read it through so for you to understand what these are. Now, a business organization has a few features. Seven of them are written over here. Uh, they are made up by a group of people who want to work together to set a goal. I think I've very clearly explained to you previously with that Starbucks example. So, you know, if you don't understand the first one, please go back to the, the recording and uh, listen to it again. You have a business strategy to achieve the goal. Okay, I sit here and I say, hey, you know what? We should make a million dollars. But wait, how are you going to make a million dollars? Just by talking about it? No. You're going to make million dollars with a business strategy. What type of business strategy are you going to make? You're going to be studying about these in this lecture. Not in this lecture, but in this course, you know. Uh, this is what this actually is. And F1 is called accountant in business. It means what an accountant would do in a business. He wouldn't just sit there preparing financial statement. There are other things he can do as well. And these are the things that we do. And... They, we have a vision and a mission. Now you go to any big website, any oil and gas website. Just this is this might just be your homework. Just go to any oil and gas website. Go to any oil and gas website. Uh, they go to BPO, British Petroleum Oils. They have a vision. They have a special page for vision and for mission. What's their mission? What are they going to accomplish? And what's their vision? What do they think they can do? Of what a petroleum industry can do? be more eco-friendly, right? So these kind of things, I mean, everyone has their own vision, their own mission and stuff like that. They have a culture which is formed by the organization values. Now, every country has their own org values. They have their own cultures. So the organization, that's like most of the multinational organizations, they have, they used to have problems. Like for example, McDonald's. McDonald's in Denmark serve beer with their normal food, with whatever you buy from them, they, they will serve beers. But now you see when you, they move to the Middle East or maybe the South Asian countries where the ma majority of the people do not prefer be, do not prefer the beer, what did they do? They changed it to coffee or a soft drink, any carbonated drinks and stuff like that, right? You have a structure such as you have departments, you have a team, you have a division, you have so many things that describes one thing to the other. When you're working in an audit firm, you could have an audit team specifically for auditing. Do you have an accounts team? You have a text team. You have a planning team. You have various different types of teams. Like if something goes wrong in accounts, you won't have to go to audit. You just go through the account and say, dude, there's something wrong in the accounts. There's, you don't blame the audit people for that or you don't blame the text people for that, do you? No, you don't do that. So that's the reason you should have a structure describing the fact that where everything, where people are lying in there. Never mind. Okay, you have input which are processed and provides an output. Now, when working in a manufacturing industry, you're given cocoa. 
What do you do with cocoa? You make chocolates. You make lots and lots of chocolate. If you're given a bunch of numbers, a bunch of documents, you could make accounts from it. So that's the input. There always has to be an input and out comes the output. That's the output of whatever you do. At the end of the day, you will get something back, right? Have customers besides other stakeholders. Now, every, con every company, we will describe, talk about the stakeholders later. We will determine the fact that there is everybody is our company stakeholder. In one of the, the one of the theorists even said, I forgot his name, and he said that even deep down in the seabed, and I'm not talking about any bed, I'm talking about the seabed means the deepest layer in water. And down there, there's a fish that's not even discovered by the human nature. But your company will be affected by it or it can affect you. Even though you don't know it or it doesn't know you. But it's still your stakeholder. So everybody on this earth is your stakeholder. Human, non-human, a plant, animals, everybody is your stakeholder. All right? But you should have customers. Like, I make, this, I make this video, I have a lot of stakeholders. I mean, I could, my, everybody's my stakeholder. But do I have any customers with that? Some, there are some people who are even listening to these things. I don't know. But do you should. In, in organizations, you need to have someone like that. Right? Moving on. Different business organization. Now, how business organizations differ? Like, how they're different? How would you know Apple is bigger than Microsoft? Very big competitor since 1970s. Amazing people, both of them. The size of organization. The first thing you look at is how big your business is. Hey, my company has a 5,000 employees. I don't know. My company has 6,000 employees. That's one of the things to see because if there are more people working for you, it means you are a bigger company. Number of organization levels. Is it a tall organization? Is it a flat organization? A tall organization is somewhere like this one two three four like this it goes down tall like there is uh, in audit firms most of them it's like that at the bottom you have your junior account auditors then you have your senior auditors i mean i'm just talking with the context it's like there are a lot of other uh, designations in the between there's an audit manager then you go on the top there's audit partner but in that's the tall organization the fat organization would be like you're the boss on top over here and then you have one department over here that's for finance, one department over here, another department here, here's the admin department, here's the HR, and stuff like that. But over here, there's only one thing, that's the headquarters. You have various different types. We'll be studying of all these later. It's just, just, just to give you a brief overview of this. Plus, it's an introductory video. I don't mind it getting a bit longer. Span of control. This is the number of people directly under responsibility of one manager. Now you can see, hey, how big is your department? Hey, I have five people working under me. And you? I have 11 people. Yay, I win. Well, you know, that person really wins because he's, wor he's working with half more people than you are. So, yeah. Then there's a centralization versus decentralization. Now, centralization means that all the decisions of a company are made under one headquarter. Decentralization on the other hand means that every branch of one organization makes its own decision. Now I have, I have a very good example of this. Since the 20th century Coca-Cola used to give, used to have their uh, business organizations, business models and all the decision making centralized. Only the headquarters in the United States would make all the decisions for them. But later they started to feel like in America the people wouldn't know what's happening in, I don't know, South Africa or what's happening in, uh, or in China or what's happening in Australia. Everybody has their own different cultures. We talked about cultures before, didn't we? We'll talk more about them later. So what centralization has a disadvantage is the fact that they cannot know what people prefer over there. Maybe they prefer small packings. Maybe they prefer a bigger packing. Maybe people in South Africa wants to drink more than other people. Maybe they want to have a 3 liter bottle except for 1.5 liter because that's too small for them. I don't know. Maybe Chinese think the 1.5 liter bottle is too big. I have no idea. 
But that's that's the problem with centralization. So what they did, what Coca-Cola did, is they decentralized. So every country have their own decision making. They decide for themselves. Hey, you, I think we should do this. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's do that. So you do that. Simple. You don't have to go to headquarters. You just do it yourself. A criteria for department to departmentation. For example, you think, hey, why not we create a department for each area, for each country? There should be one department for each country. There's one department for each area in the country. There's another department for each branch. Like there are branches of different things, but depends. Like that departmentation is the fact, knowing the fact that you have a lot of different branches. A lot of uh, um, telco companies, tel tel the telephone communication companies have this. They have a lot of branches. You, wherever you go, you'll see their branch. Why? Because they want to have more departments there. Everyone has their own department. They have their own manager, they have their own people working there, they have their own promoters around that. They are their own profit center. Profits will cover profit centers later in F2. What's your motive? Are you gonna make money or are you not gonna make money? Money sounds fun. Why not make money? Well, some people are too good or too stupid. Moving on. Ownership. Some people are owned by shareholders all over the world. You can have bazillions of shareholders. For example, Apple. They have all the shareholders from all over the world. Some holds five shares, some hold 5,000 shares, some might hold even 500,000 shares. So you don't know. Technology. Well, computer forms is high user technology, but a corner show would be... Now, let's see. There's you go to... You pass by a stall. There's a stall outside your office, and there's this guy selling... Uh, uh, I don't know, a co he's, he's selling coffee. Let's see, he's just sitting there, he's making coffee and he's giving one cup of coffee for a dollar to everybody passing by. You like to take coffee from him because he gives it cheap and it tastes good. If one day he decides to buy a really expensive uh, accounting software and he, he wants to buy a very good computer and say, hey, you know what? I want to do this. I want to invest in accounting, in a computer. Because my business is growing, you should just stop him and ask him, dude, how much do you make a day? A hundred dollars. How much would the accounting software call cost? Ten thousand dollars. You don't need the dollars. You can just count on your fingertips. So sometimes buying technology can be stupid as well. So these are certain things that you need to know. But let's say if people in Apple store say that they're not using app MacBooks, then that's really pitiful. You should feel stupid for those people. Moving on. Okay, this is industrial and commercial sectors. Sectors in which the business organizations operate. Now, some of the sectors are called industrial sectors. Some of the sectors, uh, the industrial sector could be anything. Anything to do with an industry where you produce things, where you make some things. For example, steel, metal, uh, I don't know, you make cups. Pen, pencils, whatever you make, it's industry. Because industry, the word means itself you're producing something inside there. Industry is the name of it. Um, even food refining and packaging itself also counts under industry. Uh, so there could be two types of private sector industries. Are, they are subdivided. Now, number one are retailers. When you make everything, you don't expect your customers to walk towards you in your industry to buy, I don't know, a pack of juice? No, that doesn't work. There are people who buy from you. Those people are called wholesalers. Now, wholesalers are the people who will buy, hey, come, okay, how much are you selling me a carton for? You buy 500 cartons from them and you take it to your shop. Now, if you buy it, it costs the industry $5 to make one pack of juice, just for the sake of argument, all right? The person comes there, they charge him six string it six and six point five dollars, six dollars and fifty cents. Then you move further, and the wholesaler comes and sells the pack for eight dollars. He has his own markup. To the retailer, now the wholesaler will never sell one item to you. He will sell uh, ten items, twelve items, a box, stuff like that. And then retailer is the person who's just sitting at the corner selling you one box for each. He marks up his own stuff. We don't care about it. 
Do we get it? It's very simple. We talk about these things in normal life. Why do I like this paper? Is the fact that we know these things is common sense. But having a common sense isn't very common nowadays. So that's the reason we have a paper, a whole exam on this that people fail most of the time. Some people consider it to be the most difficult paper in knowledge knowledge level. That's the first three papers of ACCA. So, yeah. So, in summary, the main industry in which organizations operate could be agriculture. I mean, you know what? Just read it through. Nobody cares about these. It's just like an example, right? Moving on, we have different business organizations. There are commercial organizations. Now, commercial organizations are basically profit oriented. They want to make money. They're commercial. The people know them. Maybe but they're making cars and stuff. They have they could have different types of goals, you know. They can have primary goals, they can have secondary goals. Now, primary goals means the main thing you need to do, main focus. Where do you want to go? You want to make money. Simple, no point, nothing else. We don't compromise. We make money and that's it. We stop there. Moving on, you have a secondary goal. Secondary goal is something you know what? But secondary, okay, one thing before about secondary goal is the fact that indirectly it's helping the primary goal. Now secondary goal is something like, hey, you know, why don't we reduce the cost? Now when you reduce the cost, what happens? Your profit increases. Now it's secondary, it's indirect, but it's still a goal, it works out, right? Now that's how it is. So the primary goal of a profit making organization is to increase the value of their shareholders, simple as that, simple. Moving on. Okay, I want you guys to read through this because it's not really going to help me telling you everything about it. But this is a limited company. Now, limited company is actually a company that has a different owners and different people holding them, different people controlling it. So they have a separate legal entity. It's considered a separate legal entity. People buy their shares of the organization of a limited company. They call them shareholders. Then they appoint some people to take care of the business. Those people are known as directors. Simple as that. Now I've done, I've discussed this yesterday in the F3 uh, topic. So I would want you to go to the first lecture of F3 introduction to accounting and know more about what exactly limited companies are. And if you have any questions that you do not understand in this topic specifically, please do not hesitate to contact me and uh, I will sort this out for you. Just to before I run through this, uh, let, let me tell you there are two types of directors. One of them are known as executive directors. The others are known as non-executive directors. Now, executive directors are the people who run the business, who are there all the time. They will be sitting there for the rest of their lives working for the company. Non-executive directors, on the other hand, they just come once in a while. They come once a month. Sometimes, sometimes they just come once a year. You know, they don't care. They just come to see if everything is fine. They're lazy. They're old. They're in their 70s. They're not having fun anymore. They're sleepy all the time. They just come and look around and say, yeah, this looks fine. And they go back. They're non-executive directors. Now, cooperatives. Cooperatives are the organization where the members are actively involved in, in activities. So they say, hey, you know what? Why don't we make bicycles? Okay, there are three people. Now, two of them are making tires. One person is bending the metals and everything to make the bicycle. So, you know, they are involved in the business themselves. They share the benefits and whatever the earnings they earn from that corporation. That's why it's called a cooperation. Co means combined. Operation means whatever work that you're going to do. Of course, so the name says it all. So, there could be different types of uh, uh, cooperations. Uh, Please read this through. It's not important for the exam as well, but I want you to have the knowledge of this. So just go through this and see what happens. Then you have, okay, mutual associations. Now, mutual associations are something that is an organization, but it's a mutual understanding. You're helping each other out. The best example, it's ironic, but the best example of this is ACCA. It's an organization. It's a mutual association. Why? Okay, what does ACCA stands for? Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. 
association. It's an association. Simple. Right? Awesome, isn't it? Then I think ACCA specifically put this on their list. They don't even, they can't even have a question over here. You know, just two lines written here. They can't even have a question over here. But they specifically put it because just to, you know, show off that they are also some sort of an organization. You know, just, just for fun. Then they're a non-for-profit organization. I told you what they're for. For example, they have uh, all these ambulance services and everything. They're non-for-profit. They're not earning any money. They're not taking the blood of the person who's dying you know, to so sell it later. No, they're not doing that sort of things. Providing education or school, that's also not for profit. It has become profit, by the way, nowadays. Now, and then you have a public sector. Public sector could be anything, like hospitals. I told, I think I've covered this before, so I'm not going to go through this again. Just read it through, and if you have any further questions, let me know. And I think that's the, the end of the A1. As we can see, the A2 is stakeholders. So I'm just going to stop here, and I'm going to explain the rest of the things maybe in the next uh, lecture. So thank you, Marif, for thank you very much for hearing this. And if should you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much, and I hope you have guys have a great day.